Before the Romans came the Etruscans. The Etruscans were the first great dominant power in central Italy. The Etruscans were at the height of their power between 700 and 500 BC. As Etruscan power grew, they expanded their influence into southern and northern Italy, and in the process established a massive trade network. The vast trading empire the Etruscans set up allowed them to achieve great wealth. The primary exports were iron, pottery, and sculpture. Sculptures were usually cast in bronze. Terracotta was yet another favored medium. Eventually, the Etruscans came into contact with both the Greeks and Carthaginians. At the height of Etruscan influence, the Greeks were colonizing different areas of the Mediterranean. On the Italian peninsula, the Greeks established many of their colonies in southern Italy. Thus, the Greeks had an enormous influence on Etruscan society and culture. Literary and historical texts in the Etruscan language have not survived, and the language itself is only partially understood by modern scholars. As a result, knowledge of Etruscan society and culture is provided by Roman and Greek writers. The bulk of the Etruscan language is understood from 13,000 inscriptions that have been recovered. These are usually funerary texts and are very short in length. They are generally dated between 750 BC all the way up to 50 AD. The origins and relationship of the Etruscan language to other languages has long been debated. It is believed the Etruscans spoke a pre-Indo-European language. The majority consensus is that the Etruscan language is only related to other members of the Tursanian language family. This is a hypothetical extinct family of closely related ancient languages. The family consists of the following languages. First, the Etruscan language, which was primarily spoken in the ancient region of Etruria. Second, the Rhetic language was a language spoken in the ancient region of Rhaetia in the Eastern Alps. It was spoken during pre-Roman and Roman times. In modern times, this area would consist of northern Italy, southern Germany, eastern Switzerland, Slovenia, and western Austria. And finally, but not least, the family also consisted of the Lemnian language, which was spoken on the island of Lemnos. Etruscan texts used a form of the Greek alphabet. This was due to close contact between the Etruscans and the Greek colonies in the 8th century BC. The Etruscan writing system disappeared around the beginning of the 1st century AD, when Latin became the dominant language, both spoken and written. Although most of Etruscan culture was absorbed by Rome, some of the culture has been rediscovered in grave shafts. Many works of art have also been found in these graves. As mentioned before, the Etruscans were very accomplished sculptors with many surviving examples in bronze and terracotta. The Etruscans were heavily influenced by Greek art, but also retained their own distinct characteristics. Numerous terracotta sculptures have been recovered in good condition from these tombs, including some that show life-size reclining figures. One of the most famous terracotta sculptures is the Apollo of VI, which is a life-size painted terracotta statue of Apollo. It was designed to be placed at the highest part of a temple. Bronze sculptures were often smaller and were exported to various trading partners. There were, however, some bronze sculptures that were life-size. The so-called Mars of Todi is a bronze life-size sculpture of a warrior dating from the late 5th century BC. It depicts a soldier making an offering. The sista was a basket or small box used for holding valuables and other purposes. The handle of the lid was often decorated with a figure. In this example, the Etruscan artist fashioned the sista in imitation of Phoenician luxury goods, which were imported from the Near East. This is often referred to as the Orientalizing period because of the many Eastern or Oriental characteristics. In this prosperous era of international trade, Etruscan artists manufactured luxury goods that reflect influences from the art of the Eastern Mediterranean. The ivory handle is made to depict the form of a standing sphinx wearing a lotus crown. Numerous Etruscan paintings have survived that are mostly wall frescoes located in tombs. Most of the paintings are dated between 700 and 200 BC. The frescoes were created by applying paint on a top of fresh plaster, so that as the plaster dried, the painting became part of the plaster, and consequently permanently part of the wall. Colors were created from ground-up minerals and then were mixed to the paint. Paintbrushes were often made of animal hair. 
Sometimes scenes of everyday life are portrayed, but most of the paintings depict Greek mythological figures. Interestingly, almost all of the ancient Greek wall paintings have been lost, while many examples of Etruscan wall paintings have survived to this day. The Etruscans achieved a state system of society. The Etruscan state most closely resembled a chiefdom, with elements of tribalism. It is believed that over time the Etruscan government style changed from a total monarchy to an oligarchic republic, similar to the Roman Republic. Although it is important to note this did not happen to all of the city-states. The government was viewed as being the central authority, ruling over all of the tribes. The Etruscan city-state appeared to have a magistrate and a chief, though exact titles and functions are not well understood. According to legend, there was a period between 600 and 500 BC in which an alliance was formed among 12 Etruscan cities. This has since become known as the Etruscan League. Although there is no consensus on which cities were in the League, it is believed the entity was a loose confederation, similar to the relationship between the Greek city-states. The main unifying characteristic was religion. The Etruscans, similar to ancient Greece and ancient Rome, had a significant military presence. In addition to marking the rank and power of certain individuals, warfare gave a considerable economic advantage to Etruscan civilization. Like many ancient societies, the Etruscans conducted campaigns during summer months, often raiding neighboring areas, and attempting to gain territory. This enabled the Etruscans to acquire valuable resources, such as land, trade goods, and slaves. In terms of equipment, a large quantity of shields, helms, and weaponry have been recovered. They can be organized into broad stylistic categories. In fact, several Etruscan shields have been recovered from Etruscan grave sites. The shields are traditionally decorated in bronze and measure around a yard across. Earlier Etruscan shields are flat, while later styles bear a close resemblance to contemporary Greek models. There are also several helmets that have been discovered at these grave shafts. The most distinctively Etruscan helmet was the so-called crested helm variety. Now let's examine the timeline. According to Herodotus, the Etruscans were originally from Lydia in Asia Minor, but modern historians tend to discount this. Recent DNA studies indicate the Etruscans were actually an indigenous population, and that likely the Etruscan civilization developed locally out of the Villanovan culture. So Etruscan civilization sprang from the Villanovan culture which is regarded as the oldest phase. The Villanovan period for the Etruscans lasted roughly between 900 and 720 BC. It was during this period that the Etruscans began to establish contacts with the first Greek immigrants in southern Italy. Contact with the Greeks had a huge impact on many aspects of Etruscan society. After 720 BC, the Etruscans began to expand into northern and southern Italy. This established numerous trade routes and allowed for the mining and commerce of metal, especially copper and iron. Trade and mining led to the enrichment of the Etruscan economy and to the expansion of their influence in the Italian peninsula and, in addition, the western Mediterranean Sea. As the Etruscans pushed south, the Greeks began to push north, and this, of course, led to conflicts between the two factions, especially over control of the Tyrrhenian Sea and maritime trade routes. Most of the tension occurred in the 6th century BC, when the Greeks also founded colonies in Sardinia, Spain, and Corsica. This led the Etruscans to ally themselves with Carthage, whose trade interests also collided with the Greeks. All of this led to the Battle of Alalila, which took place sometime between 540 and 535 BC. A Greek force of 60 warships faced off against a Punic Etruscan fleet of 120 vessels. Details of the battle are sketchy, but what is known is that the Greeks were able to drive off the Allied fleet. However, the Greeks lost almost two-thirds of their own fleet in the engagement, some 40 ships. It is not exactly known how many Etruscan and Carthaginian ships were lost in the battle. As a result, the Greeks were forced to retreat from Corsica, which the Etruscans then possessed. Carthage maintained control of Sardinia. Shortly after the naval battle, the Etruscans attempted to conquer Greek areas in southern Italy. The key for the Etruscans was the Greek city of Cumae, as it was located near the southern Etruscan border. The Greeks repulsed an Etruscan invasion in 504 BC, 
In 474 BC, the Etruscan navy decided to launch a direct attack on Cumae. The Greeks in Italy appealed to Hero of Syracuse for assistance. The Allied Greek naval forces defeated the Etruscan fleet at Cumae in the Bay of Naples. The Etruscans were never the same after this defeat, and eventually lost much of their political influence in Italy. The Siege of Veii lasted around 10 years from 405 to 396 BC. The Romans eventually succeeded in overrunning the Etruscan stronghold. The victory secured Rome's place as a power in central Italy. During the Third Samnite War, the Etruscans sided against Rome in one last desperate attempt to halt Roman expansion. The Romans crushed the Etruscans and Samnites and became the dominant power in Italy. After the Social Wars, the Etruscans and many other Italic tribes were quickly integrated into the Roman world, and many gained Roman citizenship. In the process, their own languages and cultures became extinct, and the term Roman came to refer to all inhabitants of Italy.